Good morning, Connect Church family. Welcome to our online service. We just welcome you to worship with us this morning.
church, this is the time to just let your faith rise up. Let your faith rise up and just start believing in God and what he can do and his miracles and breakthrough and whatever you need in your life. This is the time to just, by faith, just believe that it, it is done. It, you have overcome that. tuning in here with us today. I know things feel different, things look different, and until further notice, this is where we're going to be every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So we encourage you, invite your family, invite your friends, um, pass on the streaming to people that you know, because now more than ever, people need the encouragement. They need to be lifted. They need to have faith that God and his word and the miracles that are coming, church, so continue believing. <laughs> Worship here with us today, and we're going to move on to the next two songs.
Good morning, everyone, and once again, welcome to our Connect Church online. Um, and thank you for allowing me to come into your home, you know, and be with you and with your family and together, worship together and share the Word of God. Thank you to our worship team uh, members for the good work they did. And thank you for allowing them to come into your living room, into your space and worship and lead us in worship uh, today. Um, so here we are once again, you know, online because of the, 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 the restrictions. And we are praying and hoping that very soon we can meet again in person. And we will let you know when that's going to be, uh, when, when it's going to happen. But for now, uh, as it is, we are still online. Uh, but we will let you know. But it's a a pleasure and a privilege for us to be here and share the Word of God uh, with you. And um, we pray blessings upon you and your family for this new year. Can you imagine that this is already the second Sunday of the new year, 2021? You know, it looks like it was yesterday that, you know, was New Year's Eve. And today we are already on the second Sunday, January the 10th. Um, and we know, one thing we know about the future, there is lots of things that we don't know. But one thing we know, God is in the future. God already prepared the future for us. And we can go forward and embrace the future. We can go forward and embrace the new year because we know God is ahead of us, preparing the way for all of us. And that's in Him that I trust. It's in His uh, uh, promises and His word that I trust. And you should do the same. So today I would like to share with you a message based on a scripture that had been, uh, been quoted and, uh, and declared so much during the last 10 months, Psalm 91. It's a psalm of safety. And uh, myself, I've been declaring this psalm over myself and my family and our congregation. And um, it's the Word of God, and we need to trust in the Word of God. It's a promise from God. And I would like to read starting on the first verse, verse 1, 2, and 3. Psalm 91, 1 through 3. And it says like this. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So this I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him. For He will rescue from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. All of us, we have moments in our lives that we have felt exposed to circumstances and experiences that we did not want to be in and uh, have longed for it to just be over quickly. I believe that uh, lots of us are feeling exactly this regarding you know, the pandemic and uh, all the consequences of it. But not just that. You know, we all have and had days when we just felt overwhelmed by our circumstances and just wanted to give up. We have to learn how to find a safety zone and get to that place uh, uh, of safety. Sometimes we forget who we are and what we have inside of us. I want to remind you today that you have the presence of God Almighty in you. And in Him alone, we can find safety. So today I would like to share three points in my message with you. And my first point is, you will find God's presence. His presence brings you closer to Him. And that place, it's a place where your trust is going to develop. God's presence allows you to worship Him in a deeper way that allows you, you know, for your faith to grow, to develop. His presence will fortify your faith. Let, let me explain a little bit more. Your, you know, to be fortified in your faith, it's similar to taking your vitamins or your medication. If you don't take them, you will be they will be in, in, ineffective. You know, they will do anything <laughs> in your life. Okay? But if you take them, they will bring something good to you. Your immune system is going to grow, going to get stronger. So when you go to God, when you get closer to God, you are allow your faith to grow and get stronger uh, as well. So it's so important to go to God and find you know, refuge in, in the shadow of the Almighty. His presence will help you to overcome a sense of isolation. The enemy 
Satan, he wants us to be isolated from each other. To, uh, you, know, you know why? Because he wants us to feel weak and that we are alone, that we are isolated. And because he wants to weaken our testimony and our unity. The plot of the enemy is to keep you isolated and cause you to believe that no one cares for you. We need each other. I need you. You need me. We need each other. You know, uh, and we must learn how to be long suffering. L to be long suffering means that we are more patient and less likely to give uh, heated or emotional response, also more forgiving, also more understanding. We should seek to be more long suffering in our relationships because we never know when we will need the same response from someone else. His presence will teach you how to pray and communicate with him and know how to navigate your reality, your circumstances as you go through them. His presence causes you to abide and learn the rules of engagement so you can survive what you are going through. It doesn't matter what you are going through. With him in control, you know, close to him, you will understand, you will know how to navigate through your circumstances that you are facing. So that's my first point. You know, you will find God's presence when you go uh, to him because it's a reality. The presence of God, it's a reality. Second, my second point, you will be safe from hidden traps. I like the, the version of the, the message of the Bible about this verse nine, uh, Psalm 91 and verse 2. And from the message, it says like this, He rescues you, rescues you from hidden traps and shields you from deadly hazards. You know, I like that, that it's more contemporary, contemporary uh, uh, this, th this passage. I'm pretty sure that during 2021, there will be things that we don't see coming and will surprise you and even shock you, some of the saints in the past, they used to pray and thank God for dangerous seen and dangerous unseen. But uh, when we remain in his presence, we will be less likely to trip out. I have literally seen people check out you know, uh, on God. I believe this happens when we lose our focus and stop relying on God as our safety zone. God is our refuge and place of safety, declares the word of God. God will also protect you from fatal plagues, deadly hazards. What it is, this? Verse 3, it says, the follower, the follower snare and from the deadly pestilence. God will rescue, God will guard you from every kind of plague and deadly hazards and deadly pestilence. This is, you know, this, this word follower uh, is best characterized as one of who catches birds in the trap and is usually dressed, you know, as one thing, but it means uh, to destroy you. Do you know what First Peter Chapter 5 and verse says, I like the way that the New Living Translation uh, uh, puts it. Be careful. Watch out for attacks from Satan, your great enemy. He prowls around like an angry, roaring lion looking for some victim to tear apart. Let me ask you, is he a roaring lion? No, he's not. He pretends to be. Why? Because as a predator, you know, is looking for a prey, a victim to kill. But in the presence of God Almighty, we are safe. God wants us, uh, he wants us to bring us into a, a season of a new vision. A season where we'll be able to discern the plot of the enemy and come out victorious. God wants us to develop a lifestyle of faith that will allow us to speak things into existence. Our words can change our reality. There is power in our words. And God 
He wants us, you know, to use our words to declare victory in our lives and call to existence the things that don't exist yet. And lastly, when you find your secret place in God, in third place, you will find a new perspective. A new perspective allows you to see things differently. And you will cause you to notice something that you may not have noticed before. Myself and uh, many of you have gone through some hard things during the last year. But I learned how to trust Him through everything. In every situation, in every valley that I crossed, I learned how to trust God. And knowing that He was with me, you know, going through that valley with me. And was taking, I was being taken by his, you know, strong hand. A new perspective will help you to remember the promises of God that are over your life. A new perspective will remind you uh, when you are experience, um, when you experience, you know, difficult circumstances, illness in your body, for instance. The, that new perspective will let you understand and know what the Bible says. But it was pierced, you know, for our transgressions. It was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are ill. A new perspective brings you the word of God through the situations. Whatever situation you are going through. A new perspective will cause you to be more aware of your emotions and how to respond when storms comes along. You have the same power just as Jesus spoke to the storm and said, peace. And he said, be still. We have the same power in us that Jesus had. And the same way Jesus acted, we can act. This, give us, this should give us a new perspective. A new perspective will allow you to go through the situation with the mindset that God can deliver you from the chains of the enemy. A new perspective will cause you to know where your help comes from. A new perspective will allow you to embrace God's truth and overcome fear. A new perspective will make you stronger so you will not quit until you have the victory. A new perspective will make you stand your ground when others will give up. A new perspective will cause you to think differently and bring you out of that pothole where you are, have been for so long. A new perspective will help you to overcome past failures. A new perspective will make you faith grow because he is your refuge. A new perspective will allow you to not dwell on the past, but press forward into the future. A new perspective will allow you to make your walk with Jesus a priority in your life. A new perspective will keep you in all of your ways and make your path way straight. A new perspective will cause you to give glory to God and will bring you into another dimension of your relationship with Him. A new perspective will allow you to embrace new provision for your life. A new perspective will give you renewed energy and renewed passion for God, His Word, and His church, and for people in general. A new perspective will allow you to call on the name of the Lord, and He will answer you. A new perspective push you behind what you see and allow you to see yourself past tomorrow. A new perspective will allow you to see the victory even in the midst of trials and storms in life. A new perspective will motivate you to go higher in your relationship in God. A new perspective will push you to tell somebody else about Jesus, what Jesus represents for you, what Jesus has been doing in your life, and you want to share it with others. So this new year, I hope that you will understand that you need a new perspective in your life. But to get that new perspective, you need to find a safety place. And that safety place, it's found in God alone, in our secret place. 
So you need to go to God and be in His presence. That's my prayer for myself. That's what I'm looking for. That's my prayer for all of you in our Connect Church family. That's my prayer for you that are watching probably for the first time and you don't have a relationship with God yet. I pray that you will find peace. You will find safety in God. But you need to come to God. You need to know God. God, He loves you. God, He loves you, my friend. Probably you are feeling alone right now, wherever you are, through the situation of life that you are facing. And you feel alone, you think, oh, no one loves me. No one cares for me. I'm alone through all of this that I'm facing. So uh, what can God do for me? God, He loves you. God wants to be your father. God, God, He wants to be your best friend. God, He wants to be there in your life every single moment, every single second. God, He wants to come into your life and never leave again. That's what he promised. But you need to recognize who you are and what you need. And the Bible tells us that we are all sinners and we need God. We need to start there. We need to recognize in our heart and confess with our mouth that we are sinners. And when we come to God and we recognize that we are sinners and we ask for forgiveness and we confess with our mouth, God, he forgives us and he gives us a new identity. So my, my prayer today is, if you never, never came to God, if you never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, do it today. Wherever you are. You know, with simple words, you just can, you know, recognize who you are and what you need and ask God to help you. So I, I, I want to ask you, do you want to do that? I can lead you in a simple prayer and just repeat my words, saying something like this. God, I recognize that you are the almighty God. Thank you for your love. Thank you because you gave the best gift, Jesus, to come to this earth, to go to the cross and be my Savior. Jesus, I accept your forgiveness. So today, I confess all of my sins to you. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me and make me a child of God. Amen. Friends, if you made a simple prayer like this from the bottom of your heart, believe me, you are forgiven. You are a child of God. And God is coming into your heart and will never leave you. He will be preparing a future, a bright future, an abundant life that He wants you, for you to live. You know, we as Connect Church, we want to help. We want to walk with you. We are here for you. Myself or someone from our team, we are more than willing to sit with you, have coffee with you when possible. <laughs> uh, but we have some uh, materials that we'd like to share with you to give you, to help you. The next steps in your new journey with Christ Jesus. All you need to do is on the comment section, uh, if you are watching on uh, whatever platform, TV, uh, YouTube or Facebook, you know, just on the comments, you know, uh, post that emoji, it's two ends up, you know, we know it's, it's a sign that you accepted Jesus and we, you need help, we want help. Or you can write something else. Or you can, you know, send us an email to info at connectedmonton.ca, info at connectedmonton.ca, and, and say, you know, I accepted Jesus, I, I, I need help, I need some counseling, and we will be in touch with you. We are more than willing to sit with you and help you. Meanwhile, keep watching our services online. And when we start in person, come and join us here, you know, in this room, in this uh, 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 sanctuary, so we can worship together and grow our faith together and discover that safe place in God, because in Him alone, we are safe. May God bless you. Before we leave you, we would like to encourage you to give. If you feel compelled to do so, there are three ways you can online at www.connectedmonton.ca slash give via e-transfer to info at connectedmonton.ca and lastly by mail to P.O. Box 31024 Nemeo Center, Edmonton, Alberta, T5Z3P3. At Connect Church, uh, every year in January, we have what we call 21 days of prayer and fasting. We don't do it as a tradition, uh, but we do it because we recognize that we need to come closer to God. And the Bible teaches that, uh, you know, these two spiritual disciplines, when put it together, they are so powerful. Prayer and fasting. And that's what we want to do. We want to devote ourselves to God and get to know Him uh, you know, more and closer and stay there in that safe place. So 
starting tomorrow, we will start uh, restarting our 21 days of prayer and fast until the last day of the month, uh, which is a Sunday. So starting tomorrow and every day. So if you want, um, if you are part of Connect Church and you are part of our face, uh, private Facebook group, uh, I already posted the manual for every day of the 21 days with a, a prayer topic and some scriptures reading and a few questions to uh, help you to think about and process everything that you read. So uh, you can just open up that uh, file, it's a PDF file, and I have the manual there. Uh, but we'll be posting every day as well on Facebook, just in case you missed the, the, the link. Every day we'll be posting the topics and the scriptures on Facebook group and as well on Instagram. So you can follow, you know, and all together as Connect Church family will be on the same page. But if you want, you can, uh, you know, send an email to info at connectedmonton.ca and I will reply to you or someone else will reply to you and send you the file as well, okay, with all of those topics for 21 days. So please, church, let's engage, you know, in those 21 days of prayer and fasting. Although apart, we can't meet together and we are hoping that before the end of the month, the restrictions will be lifted up and you can meet for a prayer meeting, a prayer night here on, 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 at the church. So, but I will, I will let you know when, if possible, we will, uh, we will try to have a big gathering, prayer and worship night, okay, before the ending of the 21 days. But at least you can join everyone, you know, in our own uh, homes, in our own time and pray and fast and believe in God. Let's believe for our family, ourselves, our families, our church, our community, and the world in general, okay? So please p uh, pay attention uh, to the Facebook. Go there. It's the link. It's already there, and daily we'll be posting on Facebook and Instagram. So, like I said, we don't know if next Sunday it will be possible to be in person or not. If not, we'll be here at 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube. If we are allowed to meet and we have conditions to meet again next, uh, next Sunday, the 17th, during the week, I will let you know. I will make a post and we will let you know in our social media if you're going to meet here or not. Okay? So please pay attention. I'm going to finish with a prayer. Um, but meanwhile, I just want to pray blessings over you and your family. If you are in a need of something in your body, just believe. Just believe God. Declare the word of God upon your life. Jesus already did. did. Jesus already paid the price for you. And believe that by the stripes of Jesus, you are already healed. So believe. Okay? So let me pray. And let's all together pray to conclude this service. Thank you, God. Thank you because you are our Father, our loving Father. And thank you because you promised to be with us and never leave us, never forsake us, and we believe in your promises. And Lord, I know by my own experience that i never been alone. You have been always with me. You, you are with me. I can feel your presence. But help me, Lord, to go deeper in my relationship with you. Help me, Lord, to, to, to find your presence and stay in your presence and just worship you and just Lord, adore you, Lord. Because I want to grow in your presence. I want to grow and extend and expand my faith, Lord. Uh, during the times that I'm in your presence. And I pray the same for my brothers and sisters and everyone that are watching, watching this service, Lord. Lord, thank you for the promise of your word. Lord, promises of, of, of safety, promises of healing, and so many promises, Lord, for every circumstances, Lord. There is a promise, and we thank you for all of your promises in your word. Help us to, to read, to, to get to know your word, and to apply your word and declare your word over our lives. Today, I pray for those they are feeling alone and isolated, Lord. I pray that they will feel the presence of God upon them, Lord, knowing that although they don't have anyone else around them in the same physical area, but they are not alone. Jesus is with them. The Holy Spirit of God that lives in them are with them. So God is with them. So, Lord, I pray for those they are going through uh, physical problems with uh, uh, sicknesses and disease and they are dealing with different situations. I pray God's blessing. Lord, today, in a specific way, I want to pray for Zechariah when tomorrow is going to be admitted into the hospital to, be, to get a, de a surgery on his brain to remove that tumor on Tuesday. Lord, I pray that from now until Tuesday, you will make a miracle and remove that tumor 
tumor in a supernatural way, Lord, because by the stripes of Jesus, Zechariah is already healed. And we declare in faith, Lord. But Lord, if for some reason you decided to go on a different way, Bless those doctors, help those doctors and nurses and people that are going to be working on his body, Lord. And we pray for a complete and total recovery. We pray for the family. We pray for Dave and Becky and the old family that they will, Lord, get strong in their faith, believing in you, knowing that you are with them and you never leave, the, leave them or forsake them. And Lord, that, and, that, and by, that, by the stripes of Jesus... Zechariah is healed. That's what we declare. And help them to declare and believe the same. And everyone else, Lord, that are facing problems, I pray blessings upon them. Whatever they are facing, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. People, thank you for watching. Don't forget that God loves you. So do I. Bye now and see you Sunday.